Hello, I'm Eloise and this is my channel. We are not in the usual setup. I am in my kitchen and for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what I eat in a day. So you know what that means. Hashtag cooking with Elle. Um, it is currently half past six in the morning. I got up at five to take my mom to the airport. Top daughter award goes to me. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty early start for me today. So yeah, I'm gonna have my breakfast and then I'm gonna do a little bit of prep for my lunch because I'm not gonna be eating at home today. But yeah, I just thought I would film this, let you guys know what I eat in a day and bring you along with me. So if you are interested in seeing what I eat in a day, then make sure you keep on watching. Before you do, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe and all that jazz, and let's crack on. This is my little cozy airport run attire. Cute little two set from Penny's in Dublin. And uh, my lovely new dressing gown that Jack bought me for Christmas. Love it. Okay, so I have different breakfasts every single day. Sometimes I'll have yogurt with brown flakes and my pomegranate seeds, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Um, sometimes I'll have a smoothie if I'm on the go. So if I've got to go to work early and I need to have something throughout the morning, um, I really like a smoothie because it fills me up for a longer period of time. So obviously it takes me longer to drink it. So for that, I'll use my Nutribullet. I'll put one banana in it, about 50 grams of frozen pineapple, 50 grams of frozen mango, and fill it up with some spinach and then a little bit of coconut milk and then topped up with water. Um, that's a really nice smoothie. I would definitely recommend trying that. Um, if I'm going to the gym, so on a Wednesday at boot camp, so in the morning, I'll have, um, yesterday I had two scrambled eggs and some beans. Sometimes I have two scrambled eggs with um, one slice of toast, like it really varies. Yeah, I just like to switch up. I don't like having the same thing all the time. So today, I, for my breakfast, I always weigh it so that I can track it on my Fitness Pal app. Um, so I'm gonna be using the Brookly Light Greek Style Coconut and Vanilla Yogurt. This is fat-free and 0% added sugar. Sometimes yogurts that are fat-free have loads of sugar added to them to make them taste better, um, but this one doesn't. So 150 grams is 85 calories. So I also, I get this from Audi, by the way. Um, I think it's about 80p, something like that. So I always get two at the same time. Usually I'll have the Skia individual yogurts. The vanilla one is my fave, but they didn't have it yesterday. So I'm stuck with this one, but it's only a nice coconut and vanilla right up my street. Right, what are you doing then? Oh, it's lovely and thick. So it's about a third of the pot, it says. And actually, I think that's gonna be quite filling. It's quite a lot of yogurt, isn't it? Crikey, that is a lot of yogurt. Ooh, you get a lot for your calories. I used to have granola, but then I realized granola's really, really high in sugar. So I got the Kellogg's All Bran um, original one. It says it's high in superior fiber that fuels a healthy gut. So this is for 40 grams, 134 calories, but I only have 20 grams because obviously the yogurt is quite filling. Pretty much just a handful. I know it's really pedantic to weigh this, but it's so much easier to track on my Fitness Power app. And then I just go in with my pomegranate seeds and this just gives it a lovely crunch, honestly. First time I tried yogurt with pomegranate, it changed my life. It's honestly the best thing ever. <laughs> so I get these little pots from um, Audi as well and I just have half of that. And that is what my breakfast looks like. Delicious. I just like to mix it all up. I'm not gonna make you watch me eat this because I just, I can't stand watching people eat, but I'm gonna have one mouthful. Mm -mm. The crunch from the brown flakes and the crunch from the pomegranates is just delicious. Highly recommend. So I've just logged this breakfast on my Fitness Pal app. Um, it just really helps me to log everything that I'm eating. I try to eat about 1400 calories, just I wanna lose a little bit of my Christmas weight. Um, but this breakfast fills me up right up until lunch and it's only 177 calories. So I just scan all of my ingredients, put in how much I've put, um, put in the bowl, obviously, and weighing really, really helps to keep track. And yeah, 177 calories, can't go wrong. I can hear you snoring. You're a little snorer. You are so gorgeous. You are so gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> also, while I'm here, I wanted to tell you about this little Tupperware. 
I'm obsessed with Tupperware. I have, I literally have a whole cupboard behind me full of Tupperware. Whenever I'm at an Aldi and in the middle aisle there's Tupperware, I buy it. Um, and this is where I got this from. This is the, st I don't know, ever know how to say this. Sistema? Sistema? Sistema. Um, yogurt pot, I think it's called. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to try and find it on Amazon and link it below. Um, you basically put your yogurt in the bottom here and then your bran flakes and your pomegranate up here and it keeps it separate. And it also comes with a little fork spoon thing. Let me show you if I can find one. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. On the side, how cool is that? So it's a spoon on one end and a fork on the other. And I use it for my yogurt pot when I'm on the go, if I want to take it to work or whatever. Um, it's handy that you've got the separate bit on the top because then the bran flakes don't get soggy in the yogurt. Genius. That was absolutely bloody delicious. So now I'm gonna prep my lunch and I'll probably make Jackson as well because I'm a fantastic girlfriend. Um, so I'm gonna cook some chicken with my signature seasoning and um, I'm gonna probably make him a wrap and me a salad because it's just easy to have on the go. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so in the next video, you're just gonna be able to see my hands. I'm far too tall to be able to be seen up there. Um, so, so for this chicken, I've got salt, pepper, paprika, I can't say that, paprika, and hot chili powder, but that is just for Jack's chicken because I just feel like sometimes just I overpower with chilli too much. So, I like to, if this wants to come out, drizzle the pan with some oil. Use fry light if you've got it. And then I'm going to go in with my salt. And then my pepper. I don't know why I do it this way around. It just makes it easier when flipping the chicken. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Then I'll take my paprika. And then I'm just going to do the hot chilli on Jack's chicken breast. Vegans, look away now, sorry. I thought I could squeeze three chicken breasts in here, but I don't think I can. Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on top. A wee bit of oil. Oh, come on, you bugger. Just a little bit. Salt. Pepper. My mum absolutely loves this chicken. She thinks it's the best thing that's ever bloody happened to her. <laughs> okay, paprika. I like quite a bit of paprika. Right, before I put the chilli powder on, I'm just going to flip them just to make sure the bottom side is coated enough. Looks lovely to me. Right, now for the hot chilli. Oh crap, it doesn't have one of those disperse I think oh shit I knew that was gonna happen so I forgot to put the oven on so I'm just gonna heat up to 200 so the best way to cook this chicken to make sure it doesn't dry out and it's still juicy is to put it in 15 minutes flip it and then another 10 minutes and then I like to wrap it up in foil to almost rest it the same way you would rest a roast chicken and it just makes it so so juicy and not dry so yeah I'm gonna do that now Sorry if that ticking from the timer is annoying, but what can you do? So I'm gonna make my salad um, while we're waiting. So I just use the bistro salad from Aldi. I really like this one. It's got little beetroot pieces in it. Um, as you can see, they're nice to chomp on, nice and crunchy. Give a nice texture to a boring salad. I feel like this isn't cooking with L, it's just organising vegetables with L. <laughs> oh. But anyway, we're going to get to the good cooking bit later. I'm going to do my stuffed peppers that everybody wanted to see. Um, so yeah, I just probably do about a third of the bag. Then I'm going to use some cherry tomatoes. I love tomatoes that are on the vine. I feel like they just taste so much fresher and just more delicious and actually more like a tomato. So I just halve these, and I believe this is called the bridge hold, as I was told in Food Tech at GCSE, which I got an A star at. So chuck those bad boys in there. Then I'm gonna take me pepper. So I just de-seed, then I just pull it out, and then I get the seeds out. No seeds in there. Pop that to one side. 
then just go straight down the middle. I'm just gonna take that little dry bit off the end as well because nobody wants to eat that. And then just little thin slices, lovely. Right, now for the avo. So this looks a little bit brown, but that's just because I cut it yesterday. Um, I had a quarter of an avocado in my wrap yesterday, so Jack can have that quarter. And then I'm just gonna get rid of that stone. I might just have a quarter today because it's quite a big avocado. Who is a fan of avocado? Because I bloody love it. My mum eats about an avocado a day. I probably have about half a day. Um, she is so avocado crazy, but it's so good for you. And you can tell because she has an avocado a day and her skin is absolutely incredible. And I feel like my skin's not half bad either. So get an avocado in your diet and your skin's gonna be glowing. And I hate having the slime on my hands, so I'm gonna grab a kitchen towel. So that is my little salad. Um, I'll probably have balsamic dressing with this. That is my favorite. I literally love anything that's quite vinegary. Um, so yeah, I'll have that in a little pot as well. And then I'll show you how to make um, the wrap as well. I may as well while I'm making it. And I often have that wrap. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay, now I'm gonna prep my little snack. So again, these were from Aldi. You can literally get these from anywhere. Um, but I always, always chop up my honeydew melon so that I know I'm gonna eat it. Cause if it just sits being a melon, I will not touch it. So if I chop it all up, I know I'm gonna reach for it. So I'm literally, oh crap, like that. That's my little snack. And then I'll probably have something like um, my goji berry bar that I get from Aldi or something like that, but I'll let you know. Right. Time to get the chicken out of the oven. Oh, doesn't that look good? And then I always get a knife and just have a wee look in that big beefy chicken just to make sure it's cooked. Yeah, it looks good to me. Looks good to me. Okay, now I'm gonna cover it in foil. And just let it rest there for like 10 minutes and that's just going to keep it really, really juicy and gorgeous right now for jack's lunch he's in a hurry so hopefully i don't have to rush too much so wholemeal wrap from aldi we're going to stock up with the bistro salad bulk it out a little bit I'm gonna try not get too many beetroot bits in it because he doesn't really like it. The key is to keep it central and to keep a little bit bare so that you can fold that bit up nicely when you're wrapping it. Right, quarter of an avocado, just like to score it like that. Okay, we're gonna scoop out the avo. Actually, I've just remembered Jack likes it a little bit more chopped up than that because he is a fussy bugger. He's funny with textures. So it needs to be a little bit more mushed up. Now I'm just gonna spread this along my wrap. Mush it a little bit more because he's a child. Speak of the devil. I put a hot chili powder on your chicken. No, oh, get it. Right, we're gonna do some nice strips of chicken. It's still hot. So I didn't have enough time to leave it to rest, but it's lovely and moist. Oh. Moist. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Again, keeping it nice and central. Heinz light mayo. It's better than Hellman's, don't care what you say. Comment below if you're a Hellman's or a Heinz mayo kind of gal. Then we've got the M&S mango sweet chilli dipping sauce. It's the best sauce in the world. Now comes the tricky bit, wrapping it up. This is where you fall at the hurdle, don't you, Jack? Yeah, I'm not good at that. Right, this is why we put the tin fall down so we can manoeuvre it. 
So like I said, fold the bottom in. That's why we kept it bare. Tuck it in nice and tight. Roll that bad boy up. And then you want to roll back the tin foil. Tucking it in. There you go. Then you're going to have no leakages or spillages throughout the day. In it goes. Would you like a snack? No, thank you. No snacks for you. I'm driving. Have a lovely day at work. So it's 11 o'clock. Usually I wouldn't be this peckish, but where I ate my breakfast so early, I deserve a snack. So I'm just looking in the fridge and I remembered I bought some hummus, reduced fat hummus. Um, and then I always cut my own carrot batons because I hate the weird carrots that come in the pre-cut ones. They're just not the ones. So I'm just gonna peel and chop some carrots. So, I'm sure you all know how to peel a carrot, but I'm going to do it anyway because I feel like once this is sped up, it would be quite satisfying to watch. I'm going to peel two for now and see how we get on, but we're just going to chop the little bums off and their little heads. Oh. Won't fly on that one, get in a minute. <laughs> and then just gonna cut down the middle, halve it again. See, it's so much nicer to have fresh carrot batons. I think that's what they're called. I'm just, let's just call them carrot sticks. <laughs> okay, okay, so to ensure that I only have the right amount because I, I tend to overeat and I tend to go a little bit overboard. I do empty out a little bit of this into a little bowl. So I've got the Aldi reduced fat hummus. This is something stupid like 75p, like it's amazing. Um, so it's 30% less fat. So it says recommended on here, um, have a quarter of the pot and that would be 118 calories. So all I do, open the bad boy up and then I just quarter it and then just take one of those quarters out and put it in here and it's just a rough guide then isn't it because usually I'll probably have about well let's be honest now the whole pot <laughs> now carrots are very crunchy so those of you who can't stand people eating I am going to mute it <laughs> goodness me what a busy day well kind of. So I actually haven't had time to eat my lunch. It is now almost quarter to four. So I'm just going to eat my salad. So all I do is take my Tesco balsamic dressing. I should have probably taken the lid off before I film this. Or a little bit, nothing too crazy because it's quite strong. And then I put the lid back on if I can with one hand. Oh no. <laughs> and then I give it a good shake so that the salad dressing goes on everything. And then I'm just gonna munch away really. Okay, so it's quarter to five. It's a little bit early to make dinner, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm bored and I can always just heat it up in the oven. So I'm gonna be making these. They're called Sloppy Joes. It's in the Pinch of Nom cookbook, which I got from Aldi. Literally everything in this video is from Aldi. I swear it's not sponsored. 100 Slimming Home Style Recipes. I really like this cookbook. Last time I cooked these Sloppy Joes, it's basically minced beef in lovely gorgeous sauce stuffed in a pepper with cheese on top. Last time I made them, I posted a picture on my Instagram and the amount of people that wanted to see how to make them, I thought that was the perfect dinner for tonight. So you guys can see how I make them. Well, how Pinch of Norm tells me to make them because it's just such a yummy recipe. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get my ingredients and let's start cooking with Elle. Okay, so these are all the ingredients that you need. So you need one onion, 
two cloves of garlic, 400 grams of 5% minced beef. I just use the whole pack because I'm not keeping 100 grams to the side. I'm never going to use it. So just use the whole pack. Then you need three tablespoons of Worcester sauce. It's either Worcester sauce or Worcestershire sauce. I don't know, but that. Uh, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Three tablespoons of tomato puree. Two peppers if you're cooking for two of you. If you're cooking for three of you, then I use three. Um, and then a pinch of lighter mature cheddar. I could have grated this myself, but I'm too lazy, so I buy it in the pack. And also me and Jack are going to be making pizzas this weekend, so I thought it's perfect to just have it all grated already. I don't tend to stick too much to the precise amounts for the recipe. I just sort of chuck in as I go um, and just guess, really, um, and then add in bits that I think will taste nice and make it loads better. So yeah, here we go. So I'm going to take two peppers and I'm just going to cut them in half, like so. I'm going to take another one because that one looks a little bit manky. And then I'm going to gut all of this pepper. And I've always got my food waste bin just beside of me whenever I'm doing stuff like this, whenever I'm cooking. So I'm just going all in the inside and then I'm pretty much pulling it out because it's pretty easy to get out this white stuff. Get all those seeds out. You want a pretty big opening as well. So you can get a lot of meat in there. Okay, now that we've done that, we wanna just oil the pan so the peppers don't get stuck. So I'm just gonna do the smallest amount and then when I put them in, swirl the oil around so there's a nice coating on the bottom, like so. And they all stand up really, really nicely and they're not gonna tip over when you put the meat inside. Okay, now we wanna cut our onion. And I always cut my onion like this because I find it so, so much easier and it doesn't all fall apart. So I keep the root on the end for now. I'm just gonna peel the skin off and I've still got that root on the end. You wanna make lines in your pepper, not your pepper, your onion, but not go all the way to the end. I literally sort of stop there. So you've still got that root attached. I feel like I'm doing a cooking tutorial. Like who do I think I am? I literally should just stay in my makeup lane. <laughs> but I really enjoy cooking. I don't know about you, but I went through a stage of loving cooking and then I went off it again and now I'm back on. So I'll probably be off it in a few months time. And then, you just chop away and because everything's still intact it's really it's much much easier to chop it all easy as that hey i'm just going to crush the garlic into my onions because they go in at the same time so i'm going to probably it says two cloves but i'm probably going to do three because i love me some garlic i love pressing garlic it's like the most satisfying feeling it says in the recipe to put green up green peppers, but I don't like green peppers. So instead of that, I do mushrooms because I love mushrooms. So I'm gonna grab those and then we can start chopping them. And these all go in at the same time. So I'm just gonna cut them into the onion and garlic. So I like to cut them up quite small. So I go in half and then like four dices that way. And then just one in the middle. Okay, so I've got all my chopped veg. I've got my beef sitting here. We're ready to rumble. So I just like to go on like a medium high heat. It says to go for the low cow spray, but I don't have that. I should probably purchase some. So wait for that to heat up and then we're gonna go straight on in. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna leave that to fry off and brown for about five minutes and then we can come back and we can add in the minced beef. Okay, so now it's looking nice and softened and brown. It smells lovely already. We're gonna go for the beef. I'm just gonna lob it in there, take that gross bloody bit off and then I use a fork to sort of smush it in and break it apart. 
And then it should look something like this. And then I'll come back to you once it's all browned and pretty much cooked through. Okay, now that we're pretty much all browned and almost cooked through, we wanna add our flavors. So I'm gonna first go in with my Worcestershire sauce. I'm pretty sure it's Worcester sauce, but anyway. Um, it's three tablespoons, but I just sort of chuck a load in. Hope for the best. I'm quite generous with it because I really like the flavour of this. And then one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And I just do a capful, really. And then a little bit for luck. And then we want three tablespoons of tomato puree. So all I do here is one big square, two big square, three big squares. Also, it says to add 120 millilitres of water. However, because I've used mushrooms, it sort of produces a lot of water anyway. And if I added water to this mixture, if you can see, it's just going to be way too watery and it's not going to stay in the peppers very easily. So I skip that step, but if you go for the red peppers and not mushrooms, then you need 120 millilitres of water. And then we need our salt and pepper. I was about to say salt and vinegar then. And that is pretty much it. It's super, super easy. I'm going to fry that off for another few minutes. And then I'm going to have a wee taste and we can see if we can add anything. I'm going to have a little taster room. Mmm, that is yummy. Right, so I'm gonna turn the heat off, grab my peppers, and then I'm just gonna stuff them, really. So you wanna get right into the little crevices. That's why it's really important to get all the white stuff out. So have maximum room. This mixture usually does about seven half peppers. Like I always do six, but there's always more than enough for a little bowl full for Jack if he gets hungry. So this, I'm gonna have so much of this mince, but it's fine, it's yummy, so I'm happy to eat it on its own. Okay, so that's them all stuffed. Now all we need to do is add the shoes. Ikeza is what the Germans say. And there we have it. These are the stuffed peppers and then all you have to do, when Jack's about 20 minutes away, I'll put these in the oven at 180 degrees. I've got a fan oven. If you haven't, it's 200 degrees. And then, yeah, I'll make some couscous, but I'll show you that once I've started uh, cooking these. And yeah. Mrs. Meek, if you're watching, look at these bad boys. <laughs> I earned my A star in GCSE. <laughs> So with these peppers, I always have couscous with them. This is the Worldwide Foods Roasted Vegetable Couscous from Aldi. Um, really low in calories. Half of the packet is 182 calories, so that's brilliant. I usually only have a third, and then Jack has two thirds because he's a big, growing, strong man. Um, so yeah, 160 mils of boiling water. It is time, so let's put these manky oven gloves on. Get the bad boys out, look. Oh, Jesus. We've steamed up, guys, we've steamed up. Don't panic, we're back to normal. Look at those. Delicious. And then I give the boy a little bit more, just because two of them is not enough for him. And then we've got our couscous. And now all I'm gonna do is plate it up. And that is my little finished dinner and it properly fills me up. And I worked out on my fitness pal, I think it was something like 500 calories, something like that, for two big peppers stuffed with minced beef and about a third of the pack of couscous. Bloody delicious. I just have to be scared. Well, you're gonna, honestly, look, you're gonna have to. No, I'm getting the on. <laughs> you're I'm so on. disgusting. Oh, <laughs> How is it? Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> is it nice? <laughs> Hey you guys, that is the end of my day of eating, although after the gym I'll probably have a quick snack. 
So my total calories for today was 1,100 and something. Um, if I have a snack, it'll probably take it up to 1,300, which is perfect because my goal every day is to do 1,400 just while I lose a bit of the bulk from Christmas. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed cooking with Elle and seeing what I eat in the day. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe and all that jazz. I'm Eloise, this is my channel and I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.